Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. We are back today with another what's new at the drugstore video. I told you guys in the last what's new at the drugstore video, I found that I was hoping to do these videos more frequently and make it an ongoing series, maybe like once a month or so. But for the last video, that took me so long to film because there just hadn't been any new launches. And now I feel like I have enough to film another one already because there have been so many exciting new launches at the drugstore over the past month or so. So I knew I had to collect them all and get another one of these videos up for you guys as soon as possible. All right. I only have two skincare launches for this video. I feel like most of the launches were hair care and makeup for sure. So the first skincare launch that I knew I had to pick up right away is the e.l.f. Skin Sun Touchable Woe Glow Sunscreen. e.l.f. has been launching so many new products recently, and a lot of the new products that they're coming out with are definitely pretty like just apparent attempts at dupe at really popular products. So this one is definitely an attempt to dupe the Super Goop Glow Screen, in my opinion. With all the products that they attempt to dupe, they use similar terminology and or similar packaging. So we have Woe Glow, we have the yellow and white, they're trying to be super goop. This is an SPF 30 sunscreen with chemical filters, including avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octocrylene, and tons of nice inactive ingredients like niacinamide, panthenol, hyaluronic acid, squalane, aloe, and all of M1000. I actually posted a TikTok and a Reels where I applied this on camera on one side of my face and the super goop glow screen on the other side of my face. So I'll list that in the description box below or in the comments somewhere and pin it if you guys haven't seen that. That yet, but in that video, the question that I was definitely asked the most is like, okay, but what about the ingredients? Because Super Goop has really amazing ingredients and these. The biggest difference is just that this is an SPF 30 and Super Goop is an SPF 40 and the texture of the product is definitely a little bit different too. It is a little bit thicker and creamier than Super Goop Glow Screen, which is quite a bit lighter weight. It's one of those that just kind of feels like traceless when you apply it. And this e.l.f. sunscreen is definitely lighter in color and a little bit more yellow in undertone, whereas the Super Goop one has a little bit of a darker, orangier undertone. This applies really nicely. It feels nice and moisturizing. I don't have issues with the pilling and the finish is really, really beautiful. It's glowy, it's radiant, but it's not super, super, I don't know. It's not intensely glowy in the way that I feel like Super Goop Glow Screen can be. That one I have to be really careful with, only apply a little bit, kind of just like as a topper. I would never use that by itself because it's too intense. This one is more subtle and definitely more suitable for oily skin or normal to oily skin, or just anyone that doesn't want to look like they have a lot of a glowy primer or sunscreen on. So I actually do prefer the e.l.f. sunscreen to the Super Goop one, I think, aside from the SPF discrepancy, because I'm an oily gal. You guys know that, and this is really good. The other skincare launch that I was really interested to try is this cleansing balm from Neutrogena. It's just called the Neutrogena Cleansing Balm, supposed to melt away dirt, oil, and waterproof makeup, and I was hearing a lot about it, so I wanted to get my hands on it. This doesn't really have any noteworthy ingredients to call out, which is perfectly fine, because I'm just using it to remove makeup but I do not like using this to remove makeup because it just has kind of a strange texture. I don't know if I happen to get a bad one, but it definitely has like a gritty feel where I can feel like, I don't know, little granules in it when I am using it on my skin. It's not the worst thing ever. Like it's not like it feels scratchy or like I'm using an exfoliant or anything like that, but it just doesn't have that smooth, creamy feel that all of my other favorite cleansing balms have. So while it does get rid of everything on my face, it's just, <laughs> that was a weird way of saying that. While it does what it needs to do and removes makeup, it just doesn't do so in a way that I love. So I did attempt to use this several times and I was just like, like, I can't keep reaching for this. I just don't like the way it feels, which is a bummer. So this one was a pass for me. All right, let's move on to makeup. First up is the NYX Bear With Me Blur Blurring Tint Foundation. So this is supposed to be a blurring skin tint foundation in 24 buildable medium coverage matte shades. Reading that now, I'm like, okay, yeah, I probably shouldn't have picked this up. I mean, I should have for the sake of the review, but I probably should have known that I wasn't going to love this because it says that they're matte, but I don't know, something about this being part of the Bear With Me line 
made me think it was going to be a little bit more skin-like because I really, really love their Bear With Me concealer. That one is skin-like and definitely not matte. And this is just not something I really enjoy. It just kind of feels like a silicone primer, like Benefit Professional or something like that. Not quite as intense as that, but it's definitely in that same vein. And I don't love the way products like that feel on the skin. And this is definitely just too matte for my personal preference. It definitely does provide a bit of a blurring effect, so I'll give them that, but I don't know. I just don't think that this looks nice on my skin. I have matte products that I maybe don't love as much as my glowier products, but they still look really nice and flawless. And I don't feel that way about this product. I feel like it just looks off and like I have makeup on, but it's not necessarily doing my skin any favors. I don't know. I feel like this would almost be better maybe like mixed in with another foundation or in a tiny, tiny bit on the T-zone area of the face to kind of help to blur and mattify oils instead of it being an all over complexion product, unless you're someone that's incredibly oily and you really love this kind of product and it would freshen up with your oils. For me, it just didn't do that. And I have products that will do that. It just stayed looking matte. I didn't love it. So dang, this one was a pass for me as well. I hope they come out with more things in this bear with me line, but just like not in this matte vibe. Next is the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer, which I was so excited to test out because I love their original putty bronzer and I love their luminous putty blushes. So I was very intrigued to see how this would come to life in bronzer form. I picked up the shade Oh, day trip. And this is supposed to be a lightweight buildable putty to powder bronzer that gives a radiant glowy finish. It definitely has the same texture as their other putty products. So if you are a fan of those, this is the same exact thing. It is lightweight. It's a cream. Yes, but it definitely, like they say, kind of like goes into a powder as you're blending it in the sense that it's super lightweight and just kind of feels like nothing. It doesn't feel like a creamy cream product. So this one is definitely more, how would I say this? The luminosity comes from these little pearlized pigments in it. So it doesn't give you a radiant finish because it's glowy or dewy in finish. It still has that like more matte finish to it, or I would say like satiny or natural but you get the luminosity from those pigments in the same way that you do with the luminous blush. And I don't know how I feel about it fully. Like part of me really likes it, but another part of me is like, something looks off here. And that may just be because the shade isn't quite right for me. I don't know. So I might have to try another shade and see if that works better because right now I feel like I'm on the fence because I'm like, I love the formula. I love how it blends. I love everything to do with the putty range. I just don't know if I'm obsessed with a luminous finish like this in a bronzer. But if that's something that you really enjoy and something that you look for in a bronzer, then I think that you'll really love it. I'm sitting so close to the camera. Elf also launched a new lipstick called the O Face Satin Lipstick. We have a lot of e.l.f. here. Did I already say that? Two more e.l.f. products after this. They just have been on a roll with new launches. I picked up the shade Dirty Talk, but they do have 10 shades available. This one I would say is like a warm, beigey pink. And this shade is super pretty, but it's really the only one that I felt like I would actually wear out of all 10 of the shades that they launched. I feel like the others were just too dark or too colorful. So I hope they come out with more everyday wearable shades like this one because that's all I wear. But the lipstick itself is really, really nice. It's very pigmented. It does have a nice sheeny kind of satiny finish and it feels comfortable on the lips. So I feel like I'm trying to think this may be like the new best lipstick formula at the drugstore. I have tried so many drugstore lipsticks and I feel like there's something that's just like not perfect about every single one that I've tried. Like the Maybelline lipsticks, I feel like they smell kind of funky. This one doesn't, it actually smells nice. It has like a very, very slight, slight, slight cocoa scent. So if you can find a shade that you like, I think that you'll really love this. I would love to see again, lighter shades, but then also some that are a little bit more sheer. I'm definitely more into like a sheer lip color moment or like light coverage, I would say, versus this really full coverage, but you also can obviously always blot it off a little bit to remove some of that coverage. So. Nice lipstick, Elf. Good work. Another lip product launch from Elf that has me feeling a little bit confused is their 
where is it? Glossy Lip Stain, which is supposed to be a non-drying lip stain with a gloss finish. And when I saw the swatches of these, I was like, oh my God, that looks amazing. This is the exact type of look that I love to go for when it comes to lip products sheer to light coverage, really glossy. So I was super excited about this one. I picked up the shade Pinkies Up, which is just like a beige pink. But this is such a strange product to me. It has like a moussey texture. That's also something that feels kind of wet. I don't know that I've ever tried another lip product like this because any other whipped moussey lip product that I've tried in the past has been matte and finished. But this has a really beautiful, like sheeny, slightly glossy finish. It's just super confusing because it just kind of feels weird on your lips, you know? It's not like it's uncomfortable, it's very soft. It's just not a texture that I feel like I love applying to the lips. I don't know, and I think it would probably grow on me if it had a different applicator situation. This is just so tiny and not my favorite to use. I don't know. I know it's only $6, so it's super affordable and I don't want to complain too much about packaging, but this, I don't know, it feels like a sample versus like a full size product. So I feel like I'm kind of on the fence about this one too, because I like the way it looks, but there's just a couple things about it I'm not obsessed with. So eh, I don't know. And the last product from e.l.f. that I think I was the most excited to try out is their new Lash and Roll Mascara, which is definitely a not so subtle attempt to be a dupe for benefit roller lash. So this is supposed to be a mega curling mascara with a unique double-sided curved silicone brush to lift and separate lashes for an eye-opening effect. This is definitely something that adds really nice separation and length. I don't know that it's the most curling mascara I've ever tried. It does add a little bit of curl, but in terms of this being maximum curl, uh, I would say it's probably about the same amount as any other mascara that has a curved brush like this, but it does look nice on the lashes. It's just not something that I would use by itself because I do feel like I need a little bit more volume. So I'll put something like Lash Paradise on top of it, but then I think that it's really good. So if you're looking for a much more affordable alternative to Benefit Roller Lash, look no further. And the last new makeup launch is another mascara. It is the L'Oreal Paris Telescopic Lift Mascara. This one has a very interesting wand. It is like flat on one side, slightly curved on the other. I don't know that I've seen a wand like this. Despite the funky looking wand, I actually ended up really loving this mascara. It's something that I think adds great length and volume and separation all in one. So I actually can use this by itself. I don't feel like I have to use a topper with it. It just does a really great job. The only thing is that it is a really wet formula. So you'll just wanna take your time between coats. Otherwise it can get clumpy and kind of start to like smudge and streak because again, it's pretty wet. But I was really impressed by this and I wasn't really expecting to like it. So if you want just like a good all-in-one mascara where you don't need to pair, this is one worth looking into. I think I saw that they do have a brown one on their website. So I hope that I can find a brown one in stores because I would love, love, love this in brown. All right, let's wrap up with new hair care launches. First up is the L'Oreal El Vive Hyaluron Plump Wonder Water. So this actually has the same ingredients as the other L'Oreal Wonder Waters, but it just has hyaluronic acid added to it. So it says 2% hyaluronic acid, hair care inspired by skincare. And the reason why I'm kind of laughing at that is that I've definitely noticed this trending over the past year or so where hair care brands will come out with products that have skincare inspired ingredients or utilize ingredients that are really trendy in the skincare space to kind of capitalize on that popularity. But our hair is very different than our skin and our hair does not respond to ingredients in the same way that our skin does, which includes hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is a really nice hydrating plumping ingredient for the skin, but it doesn't do that to our hair. I actually did make an entire video talking all about hyaluronic acid for the hair and kind of the confusion that there lies with it, that there lies with it. No that lies with it, sure. So I'll list that below if you like to nerd out on hair care science and you're curious about this trend. It's not that it's bad for our hair, it's just that it's not doing what these brands say it's going to do to our hair. So I do think that this is a good product because it's the same as their other Wonder Waters, which I really enjoy as well. So if you are looking for an affordable treatment that you can apply to the hair that's really quick and easy to use, that's just going to help to add some additional shine, make the hair easier, 
easier to detangle and help to condition, then this is something to look into. And I do actually have an entire video on Wonder Waters and how they work as well. So I'll also list that below and spare you guys the rehash of that entire video here. Another product that L'Oreal launched in this Elvive Hyaluron Plump line is the Replumping Serum Leave-In. So this, again, has 2% hyaluronic acid. It says that it's supposed to lock in moisture for up to 72 hours, achieving shinier, bouncier, free-flowing hair. There's really only two ingredients that stand out to me on this label, and they are coconut oil and citric acid. So really nice ingredients for damaged hair. But this actually is not really a serum in the way that I was expecting because it is a spray. And I was actually excited about that because I really love leave-in conditioning sprays and we do not have very many at the drugstore. So here we have finally a new leave-in conditioning spray launch and it's actually pretty nice. It smells so good, by the way. Oh my gosh. I definitely wouldn't say that this is in the same running as my favorite leave-in conditioning sprays like Pureology Color Fanatic, but it is something that I think for the drugstore is a step in the right direction. So something that will nicely condition the hair because it is a little bit creamier, but if you're looking for something to, what do they say, plump the hair? Oh, well, I guess, yeah, it's called Hyaluron Plump. So they're insinuating that. You can't really like plump your hair in the way that you can your skin, but products can help to add volume by kind of like adhering to your hair strands and helping them to appear fuller. Second to last is the product that I was the most excited about out of everything in this video. It is the L'Oreal Everpure Bond Strengthening Concentrate Pre-Shampoo Treatment. I think that this is our first ever pre-shampoo slash in-shower treatment for damaged hair from the drugstore, and I am so excited to finally see this. I have been waiting for a product like this from the drugstore store and I am super excited that it's part of this range from L'Oreal because I love the bond strengthening line. So this is claimed to be a repairing treatment that improves damaged hair in just one use and if you have ever seen or used the Redken Acidic Bonding Concentrate treatment then you're probably thinking that this looks oddly familiar to that product and that's because it looks identical. It's just a different color and L'Oreal actually owns Redkins. So it was not surprising to me that this also has citric acid, which is the main highlight in that Redkin treatment. And that it also has a very, very similar texture to the Redkin treatment where it feels more like a conditioner than a hair mask because yes, it's creamy, but it's a little bit lighter weight. So I think we can officially say that we have a dupe on our hands here. And I love that because this makes my hair feel really nice, perfectly conditioned. It's just one of those products that I really enjoy using. So the fact that we now have a drugstore version is very exciting. And the last product that I wanted to review is the Batiste Touch of Gloss Shine Mist. This is a lightweight shine mist that's supposed to add high shine to dull looking hair for salon level gloss. This definitely does add nice shine to the hair. And what I like about it is that it's incredibly lightweight. So you guys know, if you watch a lot of my videos that I really love oil mists, this is like an ultra lightweight version of an oil mist. It's just like a fine spray and it feels like nothing in the hair. So if you're looking for something like that to just kind of like top off your hair without adding really any additional product, but adding some nice shine, then this is definitely something to look into. I don't, I don't love the smell. This is in Champagne Sorbet. It's just like really, really sweet and it's pretty fragrant. I don't know. I don't hate it, like it could be worse, but I wish that they changed the scent or just like made it less intense because then I would want to reach for it more often. So I do actually like the concept of this product. I just wouldn't rely on it by itself to recondition the hair. If you are somebody that normally applies oils to your hair to do that, to detangle, add shine, etc., I would still go that route because I think that that's going to be more nourishing on the hair than something like this. But again, if you're like towards the end of week, you're like, I don't wanna add any more product in my hair. It already has so much, but it's looking really dull. I just want like a little boost of shine before I wash tomorrow, things like that. Then I think that this is a really great product and I wouldn't be surprised if we started to see more products like this from other brands. 
smart. All right, you guys, those are all the new launches that I wanted to talk through. So we're going to wrap up this video here. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tested out any of these products already? What are your thoughts? Are there any other new products from the drugstore or not from the drugstore that you would like me to review that you have your eyes on? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Ooh.